Welcome back to the World Tellers Podcast. Um, yeah, Jonathan, he's got a story. He's got, <laughs> I don't even know. Where. Quite the intro. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know. know. He made it past that was half the board. weakest <laughs> intro, Brett. The most <laughs> unsure. He's like opening a door into a room like, I don't know if I should step in here. Yeah, I really don't. Uh, and we're about to step into Jonathan's room and hear what yeah. he has to say. The um, throne. El well, throne, though. I think the build up is... Um, <laughs> possibly bigger than what i have to offer here but um so this morning when i woke up what i was thinking about was forrest gump and when he says i may not be a smart man but i know what love is Hmm. and then i was thinking about that i'm like man i may not be a smart man but i know that jesus christ is the son of god and it's like oh even that is enough to where it's like if you don't know that then everything else you know is um, is less. So anyway, that's kind of where my hope that uh, has enough meat on that bone. Or something. Well, I think that's good. I think it's a good reminder that we maybe overcomplicate yeah. things. Um, but yeah, I, I know what love is. That's what is love. God is love. Um, Christ is, in a sense, love personified, pouring out of Himself for others, which I think is the the heart of love. What do you think, Josiah? God is love. <laughs> no, I've been reading Ephesians 3, and there's a prayer that Paul prays to the the church there, and he, he says, I, I pray that uh, you may have power together with all the saints to grasp how how long and wide and high and deep is the love of God, and to, to know this love that surpasses knowledge. And I think that that is the... The, it's almost like it's simple, but I guess what he's saying is like there's so much depth and width and like there's so much to that that you're never going to come to the end of that knowledge. It's a knowledge that it's a knowing that surpasses knowledge. There's mm. so you don't have to be a smart man intellectually, but there's a pursuit of that. There's a growing in that revelation continuously and um it's a prayer that I pray for myself. It's a prayer that I pray for my family. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I think you can easily miss the mark with, I know a lot of things about God and I can answer a lot of questions on the test about God. And, but do you know his intimate personal love? Um, I think is, I think that's where all the power comes from, right? Would, <clears throat> isn't that, I guess the point, like we want to know it experientially, like, not necessarily intellectually. Not that the intellectual can't help us point there and, and get us in the right direction, but ultimately if it ends there, it's kind of meaningless, but that it, it's something that should be... Love is almost something that ha- is an action. The, the cliche is that is, but it's something that has to be lived out and, like, manifested in our lives that uh, if, it, if it's not, then it's like, do you really know what love is? Um, well, how, how going do in emo- we, I mean, isn't that I mean, isn't that like almost the whole goal of Christianity? The point is like to live a life of self-sacrificial love for others that transcends. It, it, and usually, what is preventing that from happening? It's like ourselves are in the way. It's like we're we're it, it's it's about me. It's about what I get. It's about what I need. It's about it's like man. What if we flip that completely on its head? And it's everything's others focused because we know we're so, we're we're taken care of in Christ, in the Lord. So we're, we're good. I don't need all this other stuff. I can now go freely in love to other towards others. Yeah. I, I, <clears throat> I sorry, cut guys. you off, Brett. And then I'm no, sorry. I mean, I just, ahead, the greatest act of love was the cross and it's the most selfless, selfless deed that's ever been done. Um, I mean, that's there's no greater picture of love than that. <clears throat> well, one, I think, yeah, I think a lot of the, in my mind, I don't know, it seems like there's just like, there's like two camps and you don't have to be in one or the other completely. I don't think most people are in one or the other completely, but like on one side you have, and I think there's like names for it or whatever from a theological standpoint of like, or what is the word? Let me pause right here. What is the word? Um, 
We can't pause the podcast. Charismatic, charismatic, like ultra charismatic, whatever. Hyper Someone's charismatic. Hyper, yeah, what does that mean? When someone super, <clears throat> um, there's a a, 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 a high emphasis, high emphasis, high emphasis on the spiritual gifts. So, uh, okay. like speaking in tongues and. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. well. Anyway, it's from. In my example, I'm talking about there's, there's like two two camps there. It seems like all through the Bible, what I'm looking at is that there's like, like like the difference between the Pharisees and Jesus, essentially, where it was like Jesus had sound understanding of of doctrine, more sound than any other, you know, than anyone has ever had on earth. Um, but also, too, everything he was doing was from a place of love, and he was teaching love. And the Pharisees were, you know. At, in, in almost always exactly the opposite where it was like law. teaching without love and teaching law right which is this emotionless heartless thing essentially and so I think it's cessationism is that what you're thinking of is that what it is okay the, the, what their spiritual gifts are no longer yeah and I I do think that that we need sound doctrine like we've had conversations about like you gotta have guardrails right because otherwise you can kind of get off in the weeds and and especially as a teacher, if you're planning to be a teacher of the gospel or whatever, it's like you want to make sure that what you're saying is actually um, edifying and good for someone. But um, I think it's very easy for man to get stuck in the understanding thing because it is self-glorifying and it is confidence building and it is, you know what I mean? There's, there's so much there that fits man where it's like look how much i know about this you know mm-hmm. and it's so easy to get in that place and you can literally just miss the mark as far as the whole point of all of that knowledge was so that you could have so you could so you could really understand what love was love, yeah. yeah right but. i um take it back to four Gump. i was just thinking like what what was so um I mean, I like that movie a lot. I really like that I was, movie. I like a lot. Here, let, let, I like let me pause. I, I was thinking this morning after I had that thought. I was like, I'm sorry. Let me. No, you're good. I was thinking this morning. I was like, I'm gonna explain <clears> to my kids one day. I'm gonna show them Forrest Gump, and they're when they're old enough, they're gonna be like, Oh my gosh! Like, or I don't know. I was kind of like acting like I was. Daddy, this, are so you like Forrest? No, like like, like a grandkid maybe. God willing, where it's like, Oh my goodness, this movie, and I'll be like, This is one of the greatest movies of all time. And they're like, Oh, were all the movies made like this? And I'm like, mm, Sort of. And then we stopped making movies like this and yeah. started making garbage, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and just kind of having that conversation of like, why would we do that? And it's like, I don't really, because of money, baby. That's why. <laughs> but anyway, so. Something I was thinking, something that's like the, the, because again, Forrest Gump is obviously, the character is not a smart man, but there's something, a, a, a childlike um just a genuine he knows what love is his his life is completely absent of ego There's or like self-awareness in a sense to the point where it's like it's it's a it's a positive thing there's an innocence about it where it's like his desire is he's never worried about what's this going to do how's this going to make me look or what he, he just there's just no ego there it's like genuinely like loving other people worried about and concerned and focused on other people Again, maybe I'm putting too much there on that character, but it's like there, there is some ease and beauty about that, which it's like we're called into that to not not to become force cups. <laughs> but what I mean is like we're called to happening? die to self. So the self, the the self life is what's crucified with Christ. The ego, the whatever you want to call it, the old man, like, and then put onto that whatever your your, your concept of of what that looks like. It's like it's the part of you that's like. What about me? That 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 part has been crucified with Christ. Like we can now freely go. Um, there's no better. Sometimes you get those moments where it's like you walk into the room and you're literally not worried at all. Like, what do people think of me? Like that's what most people walk into a room are concerned about. Like, am I looking okay? Like, are, are what are people going to think of me? Are they going to like me? Or it's like, what if you just didn't have any concern about that at all and you saw people. Mm. You saw people, yeah. like really saw them. You uh-huh. talked about it the other day where you like looked in your daughter's eyes and you're like, I saw her mm-hmm. person. It's like, that's that would be beautiful to go in that. And I think that is the spirit in a sense of love. It's like, I, I see people because I don't, I'm not so worried about seeing myself and worried about what other people are seeing about me. It's like the spirit of love is like outward focus, like seeing, like really seeing people. And you can take those words and be like, yeah, I see people. It's like, no, no, like, really? 
seeing people and, and in any circumstance in any interaction like you're, you're it's beyond all these layers of like judgment and ego and like selfishness that we constantly are like wrapped up in but you're like seeing people and i mean i think that's what christ did his her whole he's like i saw you under the tree you know and he's like mm-hmm. he, he sees these people that he's healing he's like i i see to the the heart of that person like the same way he saw the pharisees like i see how exposed you are you think you're all but i see you right and you're you're in bondage to your self-life and you're puffed up with knowledge and pride and you think you have all the answers and you think you're doing it right and you try to put that on everybody else it's like you're doing it wrong you're missing the mark um hmm. but i see that in the person of force Gump. <laughs> 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 but i did i did never thought of it that really? that, that character of christ yeah but, yeah, yeah. but that, <laughs> his character is very much emptied of e- there's like no ego there it's not he, like hey look he at me crucified with christ and then look at look at it look at all the again it's a is character that the but braces braces fell off his leg dude come on brother starts running dude well and he genuinely loved jenny jenny and, like, jenny and um but Jenny's almost the exact opposite. She's constantly seeking to satisfy the needs of the self and finding it in all the wrong places. You can't you know get saying? this on any other podcast. No, this, by is, the way. this right. is deep this insight is... to the story. But no, it really. Well, but also too, don't forget, like at the beginning of the movie, like the leaf kind of blows through, and then that leaf ends up landing in other places. And so I think what the point of, the, and I don't even know if like this went over my head for like a long time up until recently. And but anyway, it's like. In a sense, like he was following just sort of God's plan for his life and God was protecting him through all these different things that could have killed him. He could have overthought mm-hmm. it at any point or and in the process ended up with more money than he needed, more whatever they needed, but kind of stayed to a wholesome sort of mentality. Anyway, I, there's a lot of... And then the other thing is too, when did Jenny come back of- to Forrest and realize that she really did love him when she was on the very end of her life, when death mm. became a reality? She's like, oh, I've had it here all along. Right. The thing I've been searching for has been here all along, and I missed it. Right. And now death is what finally reveals that. And it's you got to go through death as the portal. You got to die to self before you're set free from that. But there's also, oh my goodness, I'll take this all the way for an hour. <laughs> Again, the, 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 also disclaimer, disclaimer, real quick. Yeah. Anybody listening, try to hear what we're trying to say because we're not yeah. maybe saying it as clearly as we could, but like try to hear what is trying to be said. Yeah, go ahead and show us grace. Saying, yeah. well, uh, I'm saying that <laughs> we don't know what we're talking. There's about. also a correlation there, and I'm, we're just kind of spitballing. But like, but there's I think there's also another correlation of like if you love someone genuinely, regardless of what they're doing to you, mm. you know, the hope is that at some point they will get over themselves, and at some point realize and, and what you become in their life in hindsight was this steadying factor where it's like, well, I knew that was there. I knew that someone loved me right there. You know what I'm saying? I think there's, anyway. So mm-hmm. I guess the the title of this podcast can be "What Is Love?" Something about Force Gump. Baby, Baby don't, don't hurt, hurt me. me. Yeah. Force Gump would get us more clicks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> all that I'm matters. All about the clicks. Yeah, and click bait. <clears throat> we Coach Lamb on last week and Force Gump this week. <laughs> yeah. So. Do you have a mortgage in North Carolina? We need to bring Coach Lamb back. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather not click on here? Yeah. Um, <laughs> click uh what's it called so if you guys don't mind the love chapter the way of love first corinthians thirteen four, love is patient and kind love does not envy or boast it is not arrogant or rude it does not insist on its own way it is not irritable or resentful <clears throat> it does not rejoice at wrongdoing but rejoices with the truth love bears all things believes all things hopes all things and endures all things Love never ends. It is the beginning of number eight. But, yeah, and then verse 13, so now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest and, uh, the greatest of these is love. So, mm-hmm. there you go, Gath. If you ever are, like, in a situation where you're, like, first off, for me, and I think for anybody probably listening to that and hearing that, it's like, yes, that's what I, I long to be that type of person i long to manifest that type of love all those things that were just described and um you quickly come to realization oh wow i'm totally incapable of that i am i am not those things i am the opposite of those things pretty much but 
praise be to God, Christ is those things perfectly. He's those things personified. He is those, God is love. And we just heard the description of what love is. And by faith, I can submit to Christ in me and he can be those things through me. Again, me submitting and surrendering, the ego being pushed out of the way because I'm not those things perfectly. And it's like, that's an exciting, imagine if you go through life with that, like if I could give you a pill that would make you those things, who wouldn't take that? Because that'd be like so freeing and powerful and amazing. It's mm-hmm. like it, it's not a pill. It's a person. And you can receive him now. And by faith, moment by moment, you can walk in that reality. And that's beautiful. And he gets all the glory for that because it's not you. It's Christ in you. Hmm. What were you going to say, Josiah? Uh, Galatians 5 verse 6 is what... Um, I've been I had open here for a while, but it says in for in Christ, neither <laughs> circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. <clears throat> and so, yeah, it's pretty much that simple, but then it's what you're saying, coming to the recognition, recon recognition that I'm not capable of doing that recognition that we're, I'm not capable recognition <laughs> <Man. Man. laughs> you're not expressing love right now <laughs> hopefully all of our listeners will show us back to the fence comment about we don't know what we're talking about <laughs> so show us grace but keep listening to us no it's not that's not my point my point was that like, a lot of times people are trying to say something and they don't say it in the words perfectly but you know what they're trying to get to it's like just show us grace when you're listening that you don't hear what we're actually saying. Huh? Hear what we're huh? trying to say. <laughs> huh? By yeah. people, you mean me. Yeah. Hear what okay. is trying to be said. You yeah. looked right at my stomach when you said that. Yeah. Um, but it's the same idea of like, well, faith without works is dead. And it's like, well, what is the works? And I guess I tie this back into what he's saying right there. The faith, the expression of love through faith is the works. And so it's not a, it's not the circumcision or uncircumcision. It's not the external things that we do performance based to show we are a good Christian. That is the works. What he's saying is that's not works. Throw that out. That has absolutely no value whatsoever. Um, what has value is faith expressing itself through love. The works is the manifestation of love through faith, which once again, kind of tying into the beginning of that says for in Christ. And that says expressing itself through love and God is love. So it's really expressing Christ's life through me by his life being in me is, but doing that by faith, even when I don't feel that even in that moment, when most of the times my moment to moment life is not some lovey dovey mentality where I walk around just like, I just love you. I just love you. Like that's some people might be naturally more that way. That's not my natural persuasion, even with, People that I genuinely love. I don't walk into a room and look at my wife of 11 years and every time be like, I just love you, babe. And I just feel that emotion. And I just desire. It's like, no, most of the time it's I'm walking into a house after work with four kids that are all needing something immediately as I walk in the door. And Chess is like, well, we got to do dinner. It's like, that's what I'm walking into. Can I let faith, can I let love be expressed through faith in that moment when Josiah has no ability apart from Christ to actually manifest Christ in that moment. Well, we've, uh, I think, hijacked what we, our society thinks love is. We, we consider love to be more of like an attraction mm. and a <clears throat> desire. It's like, or an emotion even. It's like, it's not any of those things. Love is what John just read. It's, mm. it's patient. It's, it's kind. Action. It's long suffering. It's, it's desiring. It's a decision. Yes. Here's yeah. a question then. So is it, I think a lot of times our prayers are, God, make me more loving. Give, give me those those good feelings inside so then I can love people better. I think the the revelation I've come to over time is those feelings don't need to be the means by which I express that love. Faith is the means by which I express that love. Mm. I don't feel that love in this moment, but that does not mean I'm incapable of in this moment expressing Christ's love through me. Mm. Otherwise, I think... We are still a feeling-based faith where it's like, God, give me the lovey-dovey feelings. Then I know that you've touched my life in that moment, that your spirit is present in this moment. That, And it's like, well, then what about all the times where my life doesn't feel that way? Does that mean he's not present in that moment? Does that mean I'm not capable of expressing love in that moment because I'm not feeling that? And so does that make sense too? Yeah, mm-hmm. Where it's like, Absolutely. is love, love's not a feeling, but yet we still associate, like, give me that 
those the feelings of the characteristics of that love that Jonathan read in First Corinthians. Like, yeah. I don't know, that might be another rabbit hole, but no, I think that's I think that's accurate. Dang, I had a thought. I pulled a Brett over here and completely lost it. That's what happens when you're on this side of the table? <laughs> I think um, <clears throat> I think there are moments there where our uh, I want to hijack the word attunement, like where our our the animal that is us as far as our body is concerned and our emotions, you know, like those are more wishy-washy. Our emotions are more wishy-washy than the truth, obviously, because the truth is the truth. But um, I, I do think it's okay. Or I think it's a good thing to um, long for a, to live a life where those things are to me. Like it, it, I think a lot of times we talk about like emotions as if they're a bad thing, you know what I mean? Where it's like, Oh no, you're just emotion based faith. And it's like, no, no, no. I, I think those moments when those things line up, and my emotions do line up with the truth and my emotions do line up with my actions and my actions and those things are in a line. I think that is a place where we can long to kind of be in that place, right? Because yeah. that means my heart is in line with I the think, truth. And I think that's happens over time. Like with, Yeah, I think you know. our emotions, <clears throat> the truth should be like the engine of a train and our emotions and feelings should be like the caboose. Eventually the caboose will line up. Hmm. I heard that not too long ago and I thought it was pretty... Well, it's that, that same thing that that normal Christian life where it talks about fact, faith, and feelings or experience. Faith is focused on. And yeah. so if our faith is focused on give me the feeling and then I will then walk in accordance with the fact versus I'm going to walk in accordance with the fact. And over time, my life and my emotions and my mindset and stuff will conform more and more to that fact as I'm putting my faith in that fact over it's that like feeling. It's like the thing with the, um, what is it, the thermos. It's like, oh, I don't feel like a thermos, but doesn't mean I'm not a thermos. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So the, the underlying truth is still there. But I do think we can almost be like what we're talking about as far as our emotions not lining up with the truth. I think that can also be like a, a guidepost or like a an indicator of sorts where it's like, okay, there are some days I do walk in the house. I recognize the situation. I recognize, hey, how can I be loving in this situation? And I genuinely or even without even thinking about it, just naturally come in. It's like I can see and my first inclination is to handle this situation like Christ would, where I'm just coming in and I'm being loving and I'm using this moment to show my family that I'm loving without even thinking about it. And then there's other moments where that's not the case. I come in and I'm like, oh my gosh, what? Is, this place is a wreck. Like, what's, you know, and I think that situations like that can be an indicator of like, huh, how have I been living my life this last couple of days or a week to where it's like I'm coming in as a selfish human being <clears throat> as opposed to. Have I been in the Word? Have I been in prayer? Have I been serving people? Have I been, you know, living from a place of the heart, looking outwards and loving other people genuinely? Like, like what is going on in my life right now to where I'm not living this situation in love? You know what I'm saying? And that can and be kind of an indicator a, of like, me. hey, let me adjust myself or let me like use that for as a positive thing where it's like, oh, man. And even just pray in that moment, like, Lord, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Because you have tasted what it feels like to have that all be in alignment. So, I um, I'm thinking of marriage. Um, like you could you could paint pictures of two different marriages, and it's like clearly the one that you'd all we'd all want to be involved in. I think anybody genuinely would want to be involved in will be the latter. But the first one is basically it's like you got the two people married, you know, <clears throat> and and I think everybody falls into both of these categories at certain times. But you'd like to be more in the ladder so the first one is basically like look I, i'm gonna i'm gonna do what i have to do around the house to help out but man that other person better be carrying their weight too because i am not going to be taken advantage of here like i do all the laundry i put the kids to bed every night i do all the dishes i do xyz around the house i do all the la the yard work I, I do it all like come on like you gotta carry your weight too it's not fair or the baby's crying i always have to get up with the baby or Oh, the diapers change. I need to, I always have to change the diaper, like that mentality. And both people are kind of fighting that. So it's like, I'll do enough to kind of get you off my back and vice versa and kind of tit for tat, keeping score constantly of like, I've done this. You didn't do that. You did this. I didn't do, you know, constantly that battle, that enmity, that, that strife that kind of bubbles up underneath the surface continuously in that relationship where it's like, you start getting resentful. Like, how do they not see that they're not doing X, Y, Z? And then the other one is the two people are both striving in a sense to outdo one another in love. It's like, I will always 
choose to do this because I can, I can do it and I can do it for you and I can do it for the Lord and I'd love to serve and I want to be there and I want to do that. And I go in that mode of being all the time. And when you do something and I'm, I'm so grateful, not like you owed that to me, but more like, Oh man, that's awesome. Thanks for doing that. Like what a blessing and thankfulness. And it's like almost out competing. I don't want to make it a competition, but out competing each other in acts of service and acts of love where it's like, if, if you're that type of person, like, I don't know about you, but that's an awesome person to be married to. Mm. Not holding any records of wrong, constantly patient, always showing grace, always trying to understand you, not condemn you and question you. And it's like, if both people are doing that, like that is an abundant relationship, an abundant marriage that can't help but be fruitful for children to grow up in that environment. Like all those things, like you can just, and again, the reality is a lot of people's lives are a little bit of both yeah. or they get into the habit of it not being that way. And I think <clears throat> to John's point, if you start to go that direction, you're going to be walking in a lot of faith. Like, Lord, I do not want to go do this right now, but give me, give me the patience, Lord. I know you, be my patience is a better way to even say it. Like uh -huh. be my patience, be my kindness, be, be those things in these moments and then I think your emotions start to get in line with that as you're walking in attunement with the, 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 your faith is focused on the facts that Christ can be all in all in this moment. And I'm going to trust that. Yep. I'm going to walk in that. And then your emotions start to come in line with that. Like I as much as I, I love serving, this is awesome. The opportunity to change another dirty diaper, or put the kids down or deal with the headaches. Good. Yeah. Opportunity to serve. Yeah, you're talking about that. Just, Alicia's blessed, man. I was just thinking so the same. I was gonna say the same thing. I just realized how lucky Lauren is. <laughs> as you were, no. So Finn, uh, I think it's worthy of pointing out when you were talking about the first scenario of oh, I always do this and I always have to go get the baby and I'm always one that's cleaning. What? That's actually a lie. But th that is exactly what rings in your head, where it's like I always do this. But the word right. always it was someone years ago told me not to use the words like never and always because. Most of the time, almost always, that's a lie. Dude, it, you just said always. The only way that's true is if your wife has never gone in there and never held the baby, or if you, you know what I mean. And so, mm -hmm. but that's once again, it's that little lie where Satan's like, "Oh, did God say you couldn't eat from any tree?" Yeah, and it's and, like, oh, yeah. And I think the the latter situation that you're talking about is coming. That marriage, those two people are coming from being completely fulfilled in Christ. They're not mm -hmm. going into that marriage needing something from the other person because they have all they need in Christ. Mm. Whereas the other two people are needing something from somebody else mm -hmm. and they're self-focused trying to get themselves fulfilled in someone else. And when you put that expectation on somebody, that's something that no person can live up to. Mm -hmm. um, mm. But yeah. So is love an action or is love a feeling? And, I Here's think another a false dichotomy. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, maybe. Yeah, love, love is love, dude. We don't. <clears throat> um, I think it's that because I think feelings it's do not. have a role to play. You were going to say narrow path, right? No, I wasn't actually going to say that. <laughs> we're not in attunement right now. Um, I think, I think the the it's what we're putting first, right? So we have the truth, which is the truth, with his, which is the truth that doesn't change whatsoever. And then we have this feelings and faith, and it's like an action kind of. It's like, which in what order are we putting those things? And it's like we have truth. Then we, we need to assess that truth in this moment. How does that truth apply in this moment? And that's taking that by faith and, and bringing it into this moment and then acting in accordance with that, which then will more times than not result in a feeling that may shift and it might not shift in that moment, but it may shift over a, a course mm -hmm. of time. And I think the, the other thing that I spent most of my Christian life doing is here's truth. God, let me feel that truth. Mm -hmm. And then I can start to act and have faith in that truth. I need the feeling first, God, if you don't give me the feeling how I don't have the faith to actually believe what you say is true. And then it, it which then kind of ties back and around to this, does, well, does that make sense? Yes. Like, I, I think that's most Christian life. Like, give me the feeling, and then I'll believe you. Yeah. And he's like, no, walk in accordance with the truth by faith, and that feeling will start to take care of itself. You will start to become more aligned with that. You'll be more attuned with the Holy Spirit, not just in a, uh, in almost the, the fullness that being filled with the Spirit, if you will. Um, but 
I don't have we talked about on this podcast that song we we did the the B I B L E that or wait no 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 it was the Jesus That's loves the me movie. this I know for, for the, the Bible tells me so mm-hmm. and we're teaching the, this is a song that a three year old can sing and recite but yet it's the same thing that us as adults struggle with we it's like do you have enough faith I was reading this book and it's like talking about like all the steps of like whatever. And he's like, now here's where the rub comes in. It's like, well, I just, most Christians are like, I just don't have enough faith to trust that. And he's like, well, do you believe the, the Bible's true? Yes. Okay. Well, then you have enough faith. All you have to do is take what you say that you believe is true and actually walk in accordance with that truth. That That's all you're putting faith in that. And so we're teaching this to a three-year-old, but yet we as adults have realized, if you really take an honest look, it's like most of the issues and qualms that I fall in with the, my actions, it's because I'm not actually saying well, the Bible, for the Bible tells me so. Like, I don't settle it at that. I start to be like, but I don't feel it. I don't I don't sense it in this moment. It's not tangible to me. It's like, well, for the Bible tells me so. And then I'm going to start to walk in accordance with what the Bible says is true and let the other things kind of play out from there. Yeah, I think, I, I will say, I'm noticing more and more as someone who is analytical in a lot of things, I don't know, I think even Lauren's faith and like my granny's faith and other people I've talked to, it's like there are things where it's like they just just believe what the Bible says for the Bible tells me so. And so I, I'll like go all the way around the outside of the city and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've collected all these pieces and I come finally back around and I'm like, babe, God loves us. And she's like, yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? And, it's, and, then, she's it's, like, and then I'll do the, the same thing top, with... John. Yeah, man, <laughs> seriously. And it's like we just go through all this stuff and it's like, ah, oh, I finally come around. And come back to what some people just live in naturally. Um, I, I read a quote by Helen Steiner Rice, who wrote like a bunch of poems, and she was really popular like a couple of decades ago. Um, but they're all like faith based, and it's just super pure and super. I mean, it's just beautiful to read. I mean, it'd be a great devotion just in the morning, just because it kind of sets your heart in the right place and everything else. But anyway, one of the things this guy was coming to her house and interviewing, and, and she had major success. It started out somebody used one of her quotes on TV. And didn't like, he didn't even know where he got it, but he didn't like, so then people didn't give her credit because he didn't even know where it was coming from. And then other people started writing in. It's like, wait, who wrote that? And then all of a sudden she blew up and then she's been writing for years and tons of books or whatever. Um, anyway, this guy was interviewing her and was like, what? I'm going to butcher this, but why, why do you think God had like blessed you with all of this success or whatever? And her response was, it might just be because my faith is so simple. I just believe what he says. And I just love them. And it was just like, ah, oh, you know. And so uh, I think there is value. There's value in understanding, especially from a teaching perspective. Like if you're trying to get ahead of questions that you're going to be asked, you know, where it's like, okay, well, I want to know these things so that I'll be able to like portray this in a way that's beneficial to someone else who is also inquisitive about it. <laughs> but I don't, and I'm not that way. <clears throat> well, I mean, the, the, that's more the way that I am where it's like, I want to know why this works. I want to see all the nuts and bolts and where they go and then I'll understand it and then I'll know it. Whereas what I think is greater in my, I mean, I don't know, like well, I'm almost jealous in some ways of someone who just understands the truth and they just believe it for at face value, you know? Um, and I think a lot of that comes from the Lord too, where it's like, you know, I'm just giving you peace in this. Hmm. And if you can take it right there, great. If we need to go around the whole city and do that too, then I'll be with you there too. You know, but. Hmm. No, I think the cool thing is, it's like, read the New Testament. Most of it's written by Paul, and Paul's expanding these ideas that are simple concepts of God is love, but he's he's writing, the, you know what I'm saying? It's like this, it's a concept that doesn't just, it's like there's depth to that, and here's scripture from the Old Testament that points to that, and it's like, look at the fullness of that, and most of the revelations I've had have come by the Holy Spirit through reading people that are expanding on these concepts of like the Galatians 2.20 idea, which is a, a, you know, a handful of words that I can have a head knowledge of, but it's like, here's Watchman Nee laying it out to where it's like, it's changed my Christian life in the past couple of years. And it's like, you know, so it's, I don't think it's a, uh, Paul might have the, the most simple faith there is where it's like Christ crucified, right? I, 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 nothing else except for Christ crucified, but yet he writes, the majority of the New Testament. So there's that that cool, once again, it probably goes back to the simple thing of the heart. <laughs> but um, yeah, and it goes back to probably callings and 
um, <laughs> how each people are wired and stuff, and where is it coming from, a healthy place or an unhealthy place. But, yeah. Uh. What's the verse, you guys might know it, where Paul's basically talking about, like, I owe nothing to anybody but to love? Where's that? It's in the New Testament. I know that. It's in the Bible, I think. I just don't I've remember where. That says that. What is it? Basically, like, the, his idea is, like, I owe nothing to anybody but to love them. Hmm. I'll That's try to find out. I didn't it's mean in to. one of the letters he wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Check mark. <laughs> Anybody else? We're getting a phone call. Find that wow. out at the agency. A caller? No, it's a for the podcast. Yeah, oh, answer, answer it. it. Answer it. Yeah. There's a dump truck backing up across. Uh, the road. I'm not gonna be able to find it right now, but anyways, it's like that's what we owe to everybody. Um, so we'll, uh, okay, so it doesn't really matter because it's not like being able to point to the specific scripture in this verse. Like, it doesn't it doesn't matter in a sense because it's like the concept what you're saying is there, but and I'm, this. This is probably not the best, but like if you had that knowledge, it's like it's right here. Like there's a level where it's like, you know, I don't know. It, once again, that could be an unhealthy, like I know where every passage of scripture is. And now that looks and is all from the flesh. Or it could be like, I've spent so much time in this world. It's like I can, you know, I can guide you to where the answers are in scripture. Not, <clears throat> I think it and goes I'm back point. to what you just said. It's like I could do all these things in the flesh. I could have all this knowledge in the flesh. But if there's no... But if I'm pointing you here to show you that I know something, that's not love. Right, right. Is, it, is that kind of what you're getting at? Well, yeah, and I think about it on a practical level. I've had conversations with people over the past couple of years, and there's been a lot of times where how I sense that the Lord is speaking to me is a passage of Scripture will come to mind that applies specifically to the question that somebody's asking or the issue somebody's going through, and it makes me so grateful that one, that the Holy Spirit is revealing that because that's what it says the Holy Spirit is there to help you and to remind you and to teach you. And to bring to remembrance. To bring to remembrance yeah, what amen. Jesus is saying. And so it's like, okay, I can either just say, oh, there's this head knowledge that just popped in that has nothing to do with God. Or I can say, well, maybe that's how God's speaking to me in this moment. But I'm not in, I've never been in a place where God just downloads information to me. It's like I have to go and spend time in the scripture and then he brings, he's faithful to bring it to mind to apply to the circumstances at, at hand. So that's mm -hmm. that the conjoining of, oh, here's a bunch of head knowledge. I'm just going to spew it out to you, or I'm going to dial it into, I'm actually hearing what you're saying and letting the Holy Spirit reveal things to me to that I can provide to you that aren't just Josiah's thoughts on this, but it's like, this is what scripture says. And it mm -hmm. actually applies to where you're at, mm -hmm. not just, here's a bunch of information I'm going to try and download into you. Yeah. That has nothing to do with what you're actually walking through right so, now. So it's funny you say that. So I had yeah, an man. old buddy reach out to me, um, the night that the uh, Rangers won the World Series. How old is he? Okay, go ahead. Um, but I, I hadn't talked to him in probably eight or nine years, and he's got some issues going on. He's reached out to me. He's like, hey, I know, you know you're a believer. I got some issues. Um, could we kind of get together someday and talk? I was like, of course. And my immediate thought is, all right, I got to have, I got to have the answers. And so I just started praying about it. It's like. God was like, I'll, I'll give you the words to say at the time. And I fully believe that, you know, he'll bring to remembrance the words that God's words that need to be said. Yeah. Amen. Um, and it's not just, if I tried to go in there and try, all right, I got to give you this verse from, from my own knowledge, then yeah. that would not be a very fruitful conversation. I'm sure. I don't want to critique your life. <laughs> but I will. But here we go. No, it's like get it. I don't know. Was your first answer like, yeah? Where are you at right now? You know, like let me get in the car. Let me prioritize you as a human being. But um, also too. Yeah. Did you do that, Brett? Yeah, uh, yeah Brett. I haven't, I haven't met with him yet. I think but. I can meet with you on the second of. I found May. the verse. I can, I can, by the way, I found yeah. the verse. <laughs> my schedule. Yeah. Let's change the subject. Will Jonathan no, no, just no. drop the hammer on? No, no, no. I'm just kidding, Brett. But you're kind of walking in the um, spirit, but not. Yeah, but you're just letting me close. But no, uh, so I, th I think what you're saying is true. Well, <laughs> one thing that's given me confidence as of late um, is it's like at the end of the day, the message is to someone else, like someone who you're talking about who is who is hurting or whatever, is the message is Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he came to the earth. And because of that, and he died for you, because of that you were forgiven and you have the free gift where he can literally live in you now and you have a, you become a new creation 
in that. And then that is the beginning of your real journey in life. And then from there on, you know, you can have that eternal life. And, and then, and then like Christ can reveal himself to you through the word, through the scriptures, everything else. And so, so that's the message is Jesus Christ. And so it's like, I think everything else in the book is just like the more, you know, and the more, the more scripture, that's the, the, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. So it, it's all based around how can I convey this simple message but but it's but to convey it a lot of times isn't that simple. Mm-hmm. And one person is going to need one thing, and someone else is going to you're talking to an engineer. He's going to want to know what verse it is, so I can go look it for myself. And he's going to know the nuts and bolts of how. Whereas someone else may be very different. I think you're right on, Josiah. Of like different callings for different people who are teaching, but also two different. Almost the other side of that, where it's like there's going to be different people who receive the message in different ways. And so if you have this arsenal of like ways that you can communicate the same message. But in ways that people can receive it, and they're one for who they are and how they, you know, their their sort of operating system as far as how they understand things, but also to where they are, mm-hmm. because a lot of times too, it's gonna, you know, like a, you know, I know for me it was like, man, I mean, how many times did I have to hear the gospel before it actually sank in deep? And it's like, just like with my kids, and it's like, hey, you say please, and so I like I, it's been a million times now where I'm like, can it be like? I want milk. And I'm like, that's not how you ask for anything. She said, please. And I'm like, no, what I'm trying to get her to say is, may I have some milk, please. And so I'll kind of lead her down. I'm like, may I, she'll say, may I have some, have some milk, please. Okay. So what do you say? (laughs) Please. I'm like, like, goodness. What is, you know what I mean? But that that conversation conversation has happened a million times. You know what I mean? But at some point it is going to click. I'm, 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 Hopeful, you know what I mean? And so anyway, being able to, like, one, being able to communicate people on their level and in their place, and you but can also, two, You can only do those things when you come to that genuinely seeking to love right. them. But then also understanding it may not sink in on the first go, and that's okay, too, you know, and not to get discouraged or whatever, but also just be there for that person, you know. Have we ever done the podcast with the sun shining? No, like man. Days? Daylight this savings time, time is yeah, now gone, right. and now we're back to standard... Uh, we must have done it when we yeah, started it. Yeah, I just <clears throat> what done what like early when we started when the podcast. We started the podcast like, what are you talking about? Beginning of the year. Oh, not yeah, today. Not this morning. Before we sprung forward. Well, this is the first time we've done it. Fall back, right? Because we started at the beginning of twenty twenty three. <laughs> what are we saying? Right? I, don't, I don't. I guess I'm on track. What, I what I'm came, saying is, bro. when we first started the podcast, it was during it was, the this, fallback time. And then, right, but it already the 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 time the um this is the first time we've done it in the fall. Right, it's a brain twister, man. The whole setting your clock back thing. Why do we I do? To, like, I, thought, I thought that I thought I, I heard something that I had stopped. I thought they were going to change it to where we weren't going to do it. I wish they would. Yeah. Can I say one thing before? Because well, well, I feel a little tell convicted. You the verse. Yeah. Well, yeah, go, what verse. are you convicted about? Let's hear it. Well, I feel convicted because I feel like for a lot of people, what I just said about like oh having the re- being able to get to the reference point is important, but I think there's so many people that don't ever share their faith because they're like, if I don't know all the answers and exactly where to find it, I'm not ready to share the faith. And that is not what I'm saying at all. And I just, I I think then it goes back to the, you're over it. Keep it simple. So anyway, I think there's a a balance and I think there's a, I I think it's definitely important. I think being able to like steer people different and also too, even if you don't have the exact verse, but at least know it's like, Hey man, if someone's going through something and you're like, oh, well, I know that James 3, just I don't, that's, but like, I, I know I can send you to this What's chapter. James like, hey, three about? check this out. And two, and the, the more dialed in it is to someone's situation, the more time you can save them, especially if someone's not a reader. But it's like, hey, man, just take literally three minutes and read this. It's speaking directly to what you're going through. You know what I'm saying? There's, mm-hmm. there's extreme value there. Yeah, I don't hands think down. You can, no, and so, I don't think you can overread. Yeah, yeah, man. No, I just, I did, I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did find the verse. So what is Dude. it? <laughs> You're so it's too late. Do you guys have a guess at what book it's from? It's what, one was of the, what was the what say, was the verse? Yeah, say it again. Well, basically, I, I did not quote it perfectly. Yeah. But, uh, First Corinthians. Was, yeah, only no. oh love. You said oh nobody anything but love basically. Hmm. I always put it in one of the Corinthians because they're such a big chapter yeah or romans uh, or one of the one of paul's 13 okay letters. romans 13 john was taking too long to guess i'm sorry i was gonna say romans 13 
Romans chapter 13, verse 80 says this, Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Huh. Uh, I did find it, even though I didn't have it. Remember, chat GPT and it doesn't me matter. Find it. Saw, and it doesn't matter. There was no. a quote I saw long ago. In the Bible? No. It was extra biblical. Oh. Um, the book of Enoch? <laughs> yeah, it was the <laughs> Apocrypha. Um... What was it? I lost it. No, 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 no. no. All right. right, I'm sorry. (laughs) Jesus. All right. I can't remember. The one where it pops out is Jesus. (laughs) I'm with you. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) Um, I'm. I'm, I can't remember. Dang it. Yeah. Dude, the quote that starts with Jesus. Everybody start googling it. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. It was something about Jesus walking the path. Where law and love conflict, he always walks the path of love or something like that. I can't remember. I heard somebody say that um, when you're in a situation and you're not sure what to do, do the, the most loving possible thing that comes to mind. And in reflection, you'll normally always realize that that was in accordance with God, what God's will was. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of goes back to that keep it simple where it's like, oh, what should I do? How do I approach this? How do I how do I take care of this person's problem as opposed to like, how do I actually meet this person where he's at? And it's like, because my natural tendency is like, how do I get the person from point A to point B as opposed to like, how do I meet that person where it's, where that person's at? And And um, sometimes doing the most loving thing can be the hardest thing. And might, and might hurt somebody's feelings. Well, so no, what, what I would say, I I think a lot of times the most loving thing is, and, I'm not trying to like, like I'm not talking about anyone. Per, I'm, I think for all human beings is, I think one of the hardest things for us to do is to prioritize someone else over ourselves. Genuinely with time. Like, okay, so I'm going to spend less time in my own thing. I'm going to give something up. This is going to cost me something, whether it be, whether it be my routine or whatever, you know what I mean? And so, but within that, I'm doing that so I can spend that time, which is the most valuable resource I have with someone else. And I like when I'm thinking about your buddy that's calling in, it's like this dude's serious. He's clearly going through something. It's, I mean, I don't know, but odds are the answer he needs is not going to come from a five minute conversation or an hour conversation. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And the, the, I the sent most him one verse and I thought that should be fine. Yeah, I, I healed him. <laughs> you know, I just slapped him with a verse, the hard verse. The hard, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you know, I, my mind as you're talking about this guy is going back to like grace then truth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like first... Let's like, like, let me befriend this person, right? Because it's been a long time, but like, let's kind of get back there. Let's rebuild that trust a little bit. Let's, let's get to a safe place. Um, but the thing is, that's going to cost you time. Yeah. You know? I, I heard it said like the best way to engage in a conversation like that is to treat it like a sandwich. You got the soft bread, which is grace, and then you get to the meat of it, and then you end it with another piece of bread, which is soft. Like make grace. it, make it gospel palatable yeah but i guess my question would be what if what if the timeline what if the most appropriate timeline for that conversation i'm not trying to condemn you in any way or like or put this on you but like dude i feel super offended dude just go in there with the battle axe of truth and start (laughs) chopping people start wielding start wielding it and say sorry man it's just the truth i'm gonna here to wield this against you like a weapon it's like that's not the truth should be clothed i I think it would I think what Jonathan's talking about is a little bit what Coach Lane was talking about last week, being intentional and mm-hmm. available. Mm-hmm. I think it's yep. m- you had, a little bit of what John... I, I might be mistaken, but a yeah, li- not no. necessarily like... But anyway. If no, had, I wasn't joking towards him about the d- d- truth. I was just making a joke, but I, you, that, that's it. If yeah. you had one word... Was that loving, Fem? One word to describe <laughs> love. What would it be? Not bread. Sacrificial. Oh, sacrifice. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was uh, going to say Jesus. So Jesus Christo. Here's my question. If, if it, let's say God spoke to you in faith or audibly or standing in front of you or whatever and was like, hey, John, I, <laughs> I had this person I want you to help. This is a person. This is a child. This is a, a, a being that I love and I want and, and you're the person to help them. And you're like, OK, sure. If if it was like, hey, yeah, let me go talk to this guy for a couple of days or an hour or whatever. I feel like I feel like everyone, every Christian there is would be like, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, let's go do it. Lord, show me where they're at. Thank you for this opportunity to serve you. You know what I mean? That that's where our heart would be, right? But what if God was like, no, 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 this one's going to take six months. 
Mm. And it's going to take a couple hours a day or a couple hours every other day. Do you still want it? You know? And you have a choice. And uh, like, what if, you know what I'm saying? But what about, I think the question what about is my in that, time. Well, no, no. Exactly. But it, look, that's I don't the wanna, question I'm asking. And I don't know. The, you know. So what's coming to mind as you're describing that? Because I don't disagree with you. I'm just applying this to my own life. And Josiah doesn't have free time. Like, I just, I'm in a phase of life where I don't have free time. So if, if it's, I'm giving up what just, just I'll be sitting at home all day Saturday, just sitting mm-hmm. on the couch, watching football. Like, that's not a thing that I have the ability to do, even if I wanted to. Like, that's just not an option on the table. My options on the table are work at home, taking care of the kids or go or leaving the family, my wife with the four kids, so I can go meet somebody where they're at. And that that's the struggle I once again, maybe it's overanalyzing. Maybe it's like I'm not trusting the Lord enough. But like no, that's, that's a, if I'm if I'm applying what you're saying to my individual walk, that's the rub that I run into all the time mm-hmm. in this phase of life. Is I'm not giving up. It's not like Josiah is giving up something selfish to go serve Christ. It's like I'm having to give. Hey, babe, I need you to take care of all four kids so I can go serve Christ. And that's that's a struggle and attention that I have not fully figured out how to fully walk in accordance with that. Uh-huh. <clears throat> yeah, that's... Yeah, it would be easier for my flesh to go have a conversation Dude, and sit with somebody and do that. Honestly, yeah. a lot of times in like... A hundred percent. I would... Yes. That's... And that's maybe... And I, I do think there's seasonality in life and periods and times where it's like that. And now, what I do look back on is like, man, I wasted all my... "Quote unquote single years, uh-huh. pursuing oh, 100%. things of the flesh, not yep. things of the Lord." <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. What Jonathan said, if, I, if he said that to Josiah five years ago, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, I'm so selfish that I don't want to go help this person move on Saturday because I want to sit at home because I was working all." I'm going to crush a couple beers and watch some right. football. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like now trying to apply that to the here mm-hmm. now. It's like, am I using my family as a cop out to prevent me from going to serve other people? Am I am I using these people as a cop out to get away from having to be at home with my family, where it's so just the routine of just the day in day out? Like, because sometimes I think we all know as dads, it's like going out to serve is easier than being at home and dude, it's serving. <laughs> so I would it's enjoy like it's packing a bunch that. of boxes full of food and like. Getting them organized and stuff, dude. You it's guys way pack easier. boxes with shoes. I guess I could help with that. Maybe yeah. Start maybe that. one of these times you could come help out with that. <laughs> it's way easier to go off to work for the day than to stay at home with the kids. I, I stay. I stay at home with Adeline on what day was it? Saturday. On, on, on a day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm oh, sorry. I don't I mean, what you I, mean. John, <laughs> I do it all. John does it a lot. But I, I just look yeah. at what. There's no way. It's tough. There's no way. I could. It definitely gets slightly easier when you're in a rhythm, but just like shock yourself. It's like a shock in the pan if you're just used to being like at work all day and all of a sudden you're with the kids all day or two. Yeah, it's like, oh, wow. Shock. Well, you work, said something but. that I, I think was so true. We're, I guess this was just wherever. Anyways, you said something. You were like basically like, look, if, if your focus when you're with the kids is just 100% on the kids mm. and you're just kind of rolling with it and like guiding that, it's so much easier. But if your focus is like trying to get something else done, all the kids become is just a barrier to getting that other burden. thing done, and yeah. they're a burden. It's like if they're if they're the the, the that's the, not even what I was doing. I was just like overwhelmed. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's my biggest well, struggle. Is honestly like I have a list of things that need to get done, yeah. um, and I need to just let go of those things that need to get done because. Do they really need to get done? Yeah. At some point, probably, but yeah. not right now. I'm, I'm certainly not trying to convict anybody, you know, because I, I think we're all in the same boat, but... He keeps looking at Brett. I think it's... <laughs> no, no, no. Well, oh, I, Brett had brought up, you know, like this guy or whatever, and um, I don't know. It's not something that I'm like kind of trying to struggle to work with because it does put more of a burden on Lauren having to be with the kids some days and stuff like that, and or it's more burden on myself when I'm like, have the kids with me, and I'm like out trying to meet somebody or whatever for food. And then it's like, okay, well, we're not on a normal routine. We don't have a high chair here. And so I'm having to like rock him on one leg and kind of put the food in. He's yelling and we're still having a conversation. So he can't the, feed himself. There's, no, I'm saying there's a cost there. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say use myself as I'm saying, I understand because I've experienced the fact and it's like, Oh, well the easier thing is to just not do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, I, I bet if you asked a hundred people, not, not to pick on you, Josiah, but those your comment about not having free time, like, I, you know, what would be the number if you asked a hundred people and say, "Hey, do you have free time?" How many people would say yes? 
is it zero? You know what I mean? Is it, I guess it depends on the age group or whatever, but people in our age group, it's going to be zero. You know what I mean? Like free, what the heck is free time? You know what I mean? Like free time is when I'm asleep. But so I, I don't know, I guess I'm just like not trying to be convicting, but putting a little extra salt on the fact that where it's like. Because you usually have one child like, strapped to the front are, are and we one still strapped to in? the back, and you're just out there getting after it. <laughs> I mean, there are days that feel like that. And there are days where I look back and Cameron's like, you're not being a good dad. <laughs> you're just, There's you're always just doing price. this or She'll that. She'll say you that to you mean? or you see that. Yeah, like maybe I see that in my own eyes of like. Yeah. Uh, There's always a Like cost I said the other day, I fed for lunch. Cameron had four pieces of white bread <laughs> because that's what we had in the car. And we were on the move. And. You know what I mean? It's like, is that ideal? Eat Absolutely your carbs. not. You know, but she lives. She survives. It's just a, an open question. I want to leave out there because, yeah, it, like, because on the other side of that, what if the eternal weight is there's another person in the kingdom of God? Yep. It's like, oh, is it worth it then? You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that I'm doing that. I I I hope that my life will reflect some fruit in that way. You know. Um, Am I actually doing that? Who knows? But I'm saying, I guess where I'm trying to like get my heart to a place is it's like, okay, am I still in then, or am I not? You know, and I don't, I don't think that that's a, a damnate. I don't think that's a, you're going to hell because you were like, no, nah, Lord, I was focused here. I think there's different seasons for everything, and there's, but I guess that's my question to you guys. But kind of leave that one sitting there. Yeah, I think there. there's wisdom to be had through prayer and through talking to your spouses about it. Yeah, and that's the thing too is even even as of late, Lauren's talking like, oh, it seems like you're filling your schedule with a lot of things, and it's like that's something I'm trying to figure out right now. Is like, well, there, there's a verse that about talks about that. Um, your wife's body being what is it? Your wife's body being yours and your body being hers. And if she doesn't, if she's in a place right there where she doesn't want you to go somewhere, then you shouldn't go. And if say, here's here's the person. struggle that. What if? But but if they're coming from if like your wife selfish, exactly. If they're and it's coming like, from well, where's your heart coming yeah, from? Yeah, yeah. It's like we got to test each other's motives. Anyway, yeah. I think if, we, if there's a if somebody hears the conversation, and there's a conviction from that, then act accordingly. If you're there's not a conviction <clears> from <throat> it, then trust that the Lord will guide you if they He wants you to do something different than what you're doing. And so I think keeping keeping the ourself open and oriented to the Lord. And trusting him to guide us. And yeah. letting him lead. Let the spirit lead. Mm. Not your feelings. Spirit led. Amen. Yeah, we're going to leave it there. Leave Amen. it there. Won't we'll stop there. Okay. Just stop. stop just it. just, 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 just it stop <laughs> the podcast. <laughs> Unplug it. Yeah. Uh, uh, we want to pray? Pray it out. Okay. Lord, thank you for this time. And thank you for... Um, Father, thank you for friendship and for families and for other believers lord that you um that you love just as much as you love us and thank you for our children that you love just as much as you love us that you would die for each and every one of us specifically and um lord in in jesus name in your name i would just i just pray that you would just help us to wherever we're at in our lives lord wherever our our days take us um, no matter where that is, that we are just ready and willing to share the gospel with people in a way um, that you show us to do. And so that it, it ends up being glorifying to you and landing in the right way. Lord, I just ask that you would just, from this point forward, just keep us in that place and um, and help us to stay in that place. And Lord, we love you and we thank you. Amen. 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 Until next time.